When coloring comes up, I hear a lot of, I hate coloring, I don't understand coloring, I suck at coloring, which is a sentiment I can totally understand because coloring is a complex and vast subject that can be overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be, so let's simplify the crap out of this mother. Hey, Walter here with a new how to make comics video and today we're going to be joined by thunder because there is a storm on its way towards us but we are going to be talking about everyone's favorite topic coloring now coloring is a very nuanced topic full of theory that is hard to understand and execute just like anatomy but just like anatomy it can be simplified now one thing before we start this is how eye color. It's a very simple method that's kind of like anime cell shading, but I think it's really important for artists to seek out new styles and boldly go where no colorist has ever gone before. But it's a good to have a place to start, so let's get started with step one, base colors. We start off with our line layer and our flats layer. Now if you haven't watched my how to make comics flatting video, make sure you check it out. The link will be in the comments. Now your flats layer may be your base colors layer, but I still think it's important to watch this part of the video so you can understand my theory behind the base colors, and that might affect how you do base colors going forward. Just like with the flats, I like to start off with a base color filling up the entire layer. I pick the color based on the mood of the scene, like orange and yellow for happy sunny settings, blue and purples for night or moody settings, or maybe I just feel like using fuchsia, which I often feel like using because fuchsia is awesome. Next step is using the flats to select the most important object in the scene. I usually start with a character skin. Now that I have that selected, I hit Control H to hide the selection because I don't want the dancing ants to distract me. Next, I hit Control U. This pulls up the hue adjustment tool. Now I slide around the hue and saturation and brightness until I find a color that feels right for the scene. And I know that's a little vague, but play around with it and it will make more sense the more you do it. This goes along with the color theory that the sky isn't always blue and the grass isn't always green. It needs to fit into the scene in which it lives. This is why I think base colors and flat colors are different things. The biggest advantage to this method is it makes getting a harmonious image really easy. Everything looks like it belongs together. Now the downside of this is it can make everything look a little monotone and nothing really pops out. There's a few things we can do that will help this. One is to slightly shift all of the background elements to a slightly different color. We can also lighten or darken the background and you could do this for the foreground elements as well. Another way to see if there's enough contrast is to add a hue adjustment layer. Once we add that, we can lower the saturation all the way down. This makes the image completely grayscale. Now you can look at that to see if there's enough variation in light between the objects to clearly see the important objects. So if the background is dark, you would want the foreground to be a little bit lighter and vice versa. One little extra thing, in Photoshop, I like to turn on gamut warning. This shows if a color is outside of CMYK. Now those are the colors that can physically be printed. If you go outside of CMYK, your colors aren't gonna print like they look on the screen. They're gonna be duller and darker. It affects blues and purples a lot. I haven't found a way, and I don't think there's a way to do this in Clip Studio, which is unfortunate. I hope they add it sooner than later. Step two, shadows. First step with shadows is figuring out where you want the light to come from. I usually decide this based on where I think the shadows will look the coolest. Uh, for example, if you want a character to look more menacing, you put their face in shadows. Try to be consistent, but it's not the end of the world if you move the lighting around to make a panel look cooler. If you want to be a stickler for the rules, awesome, but don't lay your crap on me, man. I do what I want. Now I grab the lasso tool and select where I think the shadows would land. Having an understanding of the three-dimensional planes of a shape will make this part easier. It doesn't have to be the complex planes. Simple planes will get the job done. Take a face for example. Here are the complex planes of a face, but you can break it down to the smaller planes and use the shadows on those planes. It will look perfectly fine. Now you can use magic wand tool on the intersect mode 
and click on that object, it will limit your selection to that object. Now I have two methods for applying the shadow. The first way is to hit Control H to hide the selection, and then we hit Control U to bring up the hue shift. Now you slide around the hue shifter and all the other settings to try to get a good color for the shadow. The other method is to create a new layer, set it to multiply, and lower the opacity to about 10 to 20%. Now you wanna select a dark saturated purple. Use the paint bucket to fill the shadow into that layer. I use both methods interchangeably, but I don't mix them for a single image. I prefer the hue shift method because it gives me more control, but the shadow layer method is a little quicker and it gets the job done when I'm in a hurry. Now this is a really important thing to note. You don't wanna make shadows just by adding black to the base color. This is gonna make an image look dull and dead and boring. What you wanna do is slightly shift the color of the shadow along with adding black, and this is gonna make the image look more alive and realistic and engaging. So we do this by shifting the color to a slightly cooler color, blues and purples. Um, if your image is already cooler, you could use warm colors instead and it would give it a really cool look. Uh, you can use weird colors if you wanna make something super stylish. The theory behind this can be seen really easily when you're trying to paint something like a flame. If you're coloring a flame and you just do it with a red color and you just keep adding white to it, it looks pretty boring. But if you start shifting the colors to an orange and then to a yellow, the flame is gonna look more realistic and more alive. So that's the bulk of how I do colors. Now you could do other things too, like sometimes I will add a rim light layer uh, this is basically a new layer and I get the brush tool and I do something like a, a light hot pink and I will just put a outline around the areas in the shadow. This is basically mimicking reflected light. It helps make the, the shapes pop and it looks kind of cool. The other thing I do is a blush layer. I create a normal layer, lower the opacity and then use the brush tool to apply a bright red on the face, usually over the nose, and it kind of gives you that tumbler nose effect. There's a ton of other things you can do. Just keep messing around and feel free to try new things. Step three is texture. Now this is something you can do that will really help the image not look as digital. Now you can either do this during the digital coloring phase or this is something you could have done during the traditional phase if you drew it traditionally. So this is how we do it. Create a new layer and then get some funky, grungy brushes and just start slapping color onto that layer. Keep shifting the color and make sure you leave the texture of the brush showing. Just click once, don't use like long strokes. Now you set the layer to overlay and lower the opacity pretty low. It's gonna depend on what you did, but usually are like five, 10%. You want it to be felt, but not seen, unless you have a reason for it. You can also get photos or take photos and do the exact same thing. Once I have this layer, I like to use it for all of the pages in a single comic. It just kind of makes things quicker and it also makes things look a little bit more cohesive. That should get you started on your coloring journey. I know it's a lot of stuff, but the more you do it, the more it'll become second nature. And as you start becoming comfortable, you can start experimenting and coming up with some of your own cool stuff. Hey, you wear clothes, right? Probably even t-shirts, maybe even t-shirts with graphics on it. So why not buy some of these t-shirts? You'll have more things to put on your IRL avatar and you'll be supporting me. Yay. Be sure to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.